In this lesson, we're going to look at the naming um, of aldehydes and ketones, as well as looking at a few uh, common properties and characteristics of aldehydes and ketones. First, let's look at the definition of an aldehyde. An aldehyde is an organic compound characterized by a terminal carbonyl functional group bonded to at least one hydrogen. And a few key words here. Well, we've got a carbonyl functional group which looks like this. It's a C double bonded to an O, right? Uh, another key word in for, and it's typically of aldehydes, is the word terminal, right? And so really what that means is that it's gonna be located at the end of a chain of carbon. So you're gonna have a whole bunch of carbons, right, in a chain, but this last carbon is gonna be double bonded to an O and single bonded to just an H. So this is what we talk what we're talking about this this ending here, right? Where typically it's the C double bonded to an O, which is our carbonyl group, right? This is our carbonyl group here. And one of the bonds from this carbon has to be to a hydrogen. Now it doesn't always have to be to another chain, right? We can have pretty much one of the simplest um, aldehydes that we're gonna look at in a, in a moment. Um, that can have hydrogens on both ends, right? So all that means is really it's the only carbon hydrogen, uh, sorry, carbon oxygen double bond that's located. Right. So let's look at a few examples here. Formaldehyde, right, used as an antiseptic and a disinfectant, also used um, as a uh, preservative when dealing with uh, dissecting of animals, right? If you're studying biology. Uh, acetaldehyde used um, for dyes and for other types of preservatives. Small chain aldehydes, right? Small carbon chain aldehydes have a strong unpleasant smell, right? Hence, um, something like formaldehyde, very strong smell in the lab. Um, small, it's a very small chain of, of carbon um, oxygen, or, or should we say a small chain aldehyde. Now, the larger the, the molecule, right, so the longer the chain of carbons um, with the uh, carbonyl group at the end, right, as a terminal group, um, have a, I should say, more <laughs> pleasant, uh, flowery fragrance, um, usually found in essential oils of plants, right, and this is really what's used uh, for perfumes and for uh, aromatherapy products. Now, a ketone is an organic compound characterized by the presence of the same carbonyl group, right, bonded to two carbon atoms. So we need a minimum of two um, carbon atoms that are bonded to the outside. So in, in fact, really the simplest um, ketone must have three carbons. So the smallest ketone must have the sm um, th at least three um, carbons. So let's look at, again, what is that carbonyl group? And here's that carbonyl group that we we're talking about, right? That C double bonded to an O. But a typical carbonyl, or sorry, ketone has this carbonyl group. And you see these R's? We have R and then an R prime kind of, so to speak. All that means is that it's the side chains. It's the alkyl groups, right? So alkyl groups. And all that means is the C's, you know, bonded to the hydrogens, right? So we could have a CH3 here, right, bonded to this C. And this CR could be a CH2, CH3, right? So we've got our methyl group and an ethyl group as this R to represent the R prime. Or we can actually have, and as we said, this is now technically, if we look at this, we've got a four carbon chain. But in fact, as we said, a ketone, the minimum requirement is three carbons. And if we look at what the three carbons would look like, well, it would be this CH3, this C, and in fact, let's erase that, and it would be another CH3. So a C, C, C carbon group and notice how the ketone is always in the middle of other carbons right so this carbonyl group here is not going to have an H 
or it's not going to have a single bond to an H because if it did, it would be considered a, a, a terminal carbonyl group, right? It would be at the end, but it's not at the end. It's actually in the middle of other alkyl groups, and these are considered alkyl groups. Let's look at a couple of examples of ketones. So typical pheromones that uh, insects use to, uh, to attract those of the opposite sex, right, are, uh, are typical ketones. Uh, two heptanone is used by some ants to actually warn of actual danger, right? So um, notice how these aldehydes, these ketones, all have distinct uh, odors. However, with some of these odors, they are very species specific, right? So of course, right? You know, an insect attracting another insect is going to attract another insect of the same sex. Right? Naming and drawing. Aldehyde. So according to IUPAC, right, when naming, right, what we do is we take the parent name of the alkene, right, so we've learned the, the naming of alkenes, and if you don't, you need to go back and uh, refresh your, your naming skills on alkenes. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop the letter E in the alkene and put in the suffix AL to the ending. Here we have a methane group, right? So this is what we're talking about, the parent name of the alkene. So if we've got methane, right? What we need to do is we need to attach a double uh, a double bond to an oxygen from this carbon, right? It's the only carbon, right? So what we're going to have is carbon has to be double bonded to an O, right? And knowing our rules for the carbon bond, right? Carbon is allowed to bond you know, has four valence electrons, right? So it's allowed to have up to four bonds. And right now we've already combinated for two of those bonds, right? So if we look at this methanol, right? We know it's a derivative of methane and the AL just means that it is uh, an aldehyde, right? So that means we need to attach our C double bonded to an O to its only carbon. So we've got its only carbon. Now we've got two of the bonds already taken of the four possible bonds that we can. And the only thing that's left would be hydrogen. So in other words, we're going to lose two of these bonds. And those two bonds to hydrogens are now going to become the double bond to the oxygen. And here is what we are talking about. Um, methanol, also known as formaldehyde. Now let's look at uh, actual um, drawing of these structures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with drawing ethane. And so we know ethane is a two carbon um, link. Uh, each one of these carbons is going to bond to an H. Now, what we're going to do is we've got ethanol, right? So that means we need to attach a C double bonded to an O. And really, it doesn't really matter because either side is going to, can be represented by the number one carbon, so to speak, right? And, and it's always got to be at the end. So whether we use this carbon to bond the double O or this carbon to bond the double O, it doesn't really matter because regardless, it's, it would still represent kind of the same carbon. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my two carbons, right? Because it's it's an ethane derivative, right? And I'm going to pick one of these carbons to be my double bonded to an O. Now, look at the bonds. We've got three bonds in total. We've got the two to this oxygen, one to this, which means we have room for one more hydrogen. Now, if we look at this carbon, this carbon will have three hydrogens. So note the difference between ethane and ethanol. Notice here the C double bonded to an O is at the end of the chain and we've got a hydrogen bonded to that carbon of the carbonyl group. Now let's look at um, propane and propane here um, is a um, three carbon um, link, right? So let's draw our three carbons. One, two, three. 
right? So we're gonna bond three H's to this. We're gonna bond, well, you can only fit two on this and three hydrogens on this one. Now, we've got propane here, all right? Propanol, propane derivative, with an aldehyde group at the end, right? At the terminal, so to speak, right? So it's at the end. Now, let's look at where we can actually do this. Now, only thing is, the carbon, this, this carbonyl group must be on this carbon or on this carbon. That's the only option we have. It has to be at the ends because that's what aldehydes are. Aldehydes are terminal or, or uh, C double bonded to O carbonyl functional groups found at either end of our, um, of our aldehyde. It cannot be here in the middle because if we put it here in the middle, it would be considered a ketone. And we're going to see uh, the naming of ketones um, in just a second. So what we're going to do, I'm going to put it on this carbon here. right? So I'm going to still start off with my three carbon chain, right? So monkeys eat peeled, right? So three, um, you know, to use the expression monkeys eat peeled bananas to help me figure out how many um, carbons I'm drawing. And I'm going to draw immediately my C double bonded to an O at the very end. I could either draw it here or I could draw it on this last one. And as we said, the other rule, not only for aldehydes do we bond the C double bonded to an O at one of the ends, but also hydrogen has to be one of the other um, bonds to that. So we've got our carbonyl group and we've got our H that is typically Right? Notice both examples, C double bonded to O, C double bonded to O at the end with an H. And now all we got to do is throw in our hydrogens. So we can throw in three hydrogens with this carbon and only two hydrogens with that carbon. And here we have what the uh, structure of propanol is going to look like. Naming and drawing ketones. So ketones, when we're naming it, we're gonna drop that same E that we were dropping for all the heights, but now we are going to end in, replace it with the suffix O and E. So we're gonna take the parent alkane name, right? And drop the E and put in an O and E. So simplest possible ketone, as we said, right? Has to be at least a three carbon link. Now, as we said, ketones are not at the end. They are somewhere in the middle. So we have only one option. There are three carbons. The middle hydrogen, or sorry, the middle carbon is our only option to draw our, what we call propanone, right? So we have the propane derivative, O-N-E representing a ketone. So we're still going to draw as we were drawing before our propane derivative, right? Three carbons. Now, remember with the example on the previous slide, we were putting our carbonyl group at either one of the ends. But now with ketones, they always represent inner carbons. So never the outer carbons. So we're going to right away put in our double bond to an O. I like to put it here at the top. I don't put it at the bottom. You can do it at the bottom. It doesn't really matter, but you should put your uh, C double uh, bonded to an O and the O pointing upwards, right? And all we're gonna do now is fill in the H's that are left with these, right? So notice here, the carbonyl group, and notice how the outer bonds of this carbon is an alkyl group and another alkyl group. They're not hydrogens. If one of these was just hydrogen, it would not be considered a ketone, it would be considered an, uh, an aldehyde. So let's look at uh, another example here. So let's look at the difference between hexane and hexanone. And as we said, for hexanone, the O-N-E ending means that we have a ketone. And we could almost figure out what this two means. What this two means is that is where our um, C double bonded to or our carbonyl functional group must lie in. So let's draw our hexane first. So we've got C four, five, six carbons, right? 
we throw in our hydrogens at either end, right? Because those are the ones that are at three. And all these inner ones are going to have two hydrogens. So we can start naming it on either end. But, all right, so, and really for hexane, we've got six carbons and just the rest are going to be hydrogens. But now to show this two hexanone, we still need to draw our six hydrogens. Four five, four, uh, five, and I'll put that here, six, right? However, we've got a two hexanone, which means our, um, we can start naming it from here, one, two, three, four, or start naming it from here, one, two, three. And I like to start naming it the way um, the English language is read from left to right. So I'm gonna put my double bond, my carbonyl group, here on one of the inner carbons, which means, right, we cannot bond anything else to this carbon. So now we can just fill in our hydrogen. So we've got three on this end, three on this end. And all the inner carbons, except for this one, will have two H's. So notice the difference really between this diagram and this diagram. Right, really not much difference. Still, they both have six carbons. Right, only difference is with this one, we actually have a carbonyl group surrounded by one alkyl group and another alkyl group. So notice that this carbonyl group is not surrounded by a hydrogen. Right, it is bonded to another C and another C on this side. Right, hence it's considered a ketone. So let's look at some properties of aldehydes and ketones. Notice here, if we look at um, aldehydes and ketones, aldehydes and ketones have a lower boiling point than their parent alcohol, right? So here we have um, pretty much propane is the derivative, right? Three carbon link chain. So what we have here is the alcohol group of propane, right? The one propanol. We have the aldehyde, propanol, and propanone, the ketone derivative of the propane. Notice the boiling point. So the boiling point is higher than aldehydes and ketones, right? So why is that? Well, the reason is they're missing the OH functional group. If you look at propanol, propanol has this OH ending, right? And we know that this is very, this is um, where hydrogen bonds are actually going to lie when we're mixing it with other compounds, as you're going to see in a, um, in a future lesson. Now, some other properties, the carbonyl group in uh, the aldehyde ketone, this C double bonded to O is very polar, right? Uh, because of the sharing of uh, the double bonds, we've got four electrons here um, in total. Right? A few things. This makes it more soluble in water than a nonpolar carbon uh, hydrocarbon, right? So our typical hydrocarbon links, right? These are considered very nonpolar, right? Because the bonds between carbon and hydrogen is very um, nonpolar, right? But if you look at the bond between the C and the double bond of the O, it is a very polar. So it allows for um, uh, to be more soluble in water. It allows it to interact with water. And lastly, right, um, with these uh, aldehydes and ketones, they're able to mix with both polar and nonpolar substances because there are the nonpolar um, aspects of ketones, right? If you look at a, a long chain like this, right? So we've got our C double bonded to an O, which is then, right? So if we have this longer chain, right? So notice how nonpolar and much longer that chain is. And the only polar end is really this piece here in the middle. Right? So that's why it's able to mix very well with polar and nonpolar substances, right? And that's the reason why um, all the hydrogen ketones are considered um, great solvents, right? So a typical solvent here, acetone, which is propanone, uh, is an effective um, use in the removal of nail polish. Now, a warning when using aldehydes and ketones should be used in well-ventilated areas as they are considered very volatile and very flammable.